My brothers and sisters in Christ, we gather together to offer our prayers of praise and thanksgiving in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, we call to mind our failings and God's unfailing mercy. Lord Jesus, John the Baptist prepared the way for you. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you have come among us as one like us in all things but sin. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have come to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. Like the choice fat of the sacred offerings, so was David in Israel. He made sport of lions as though they were kids, and of bears like lambs of the flock. As a youth, he slew the giant and wiped out the people's disgrace when his hand let fly the sling stone that crushed the pride of Goliath. Since he called upon the Most High God, who gave strength to his right arm, to defeat the skilled warrior and raise up the might of his people, therefore the women sang his praises and ascribed to him tens of thousands and praised him when they blessed the Lord. When he assumed the royal crown, he battled and subdued the enemy on every side. He destroyed the hostile Philistines and shattered their power till our own day. With his every deed, he offered thanks to God Most High in words of praise. With his whole being, he loved his maker and daily had his praises sung. He set singers before the altar, and by their voices he made sweet melodies. He added beauty to the feasts and solemnized the seasons of the year, so that when the holy name was praised before daybreak, the sanctuary would resound. The Lord forgave him his sins and exalted his strength forever. He conferred on him the rights of royalty and established his throne in Israel. The word of the Lord. Our psalm response is, Blessed be God, my salvation. Blessed be God, my salvation. God's ways, God's way is unerring. The promise of the Lord is fire tried. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. Blessed be God, my salvation. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. Exalted be God, my Savior. 
Therefore, I will proclaim you, O Lord, among the nations, and I will sing praise to your name. Blessed be God, my salvation. You who gave great victories to your king and showed kindness to your anointed, to David and his posterity forever. Blessed be God, my salvation. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. King Herod heard about Jesus, for his fame had become widespread, and people were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why mighty powers are at work in him. Others were saying, he is Elijah. Still others, he is a prophet like any of the prophets. But when Herod learned of it, he said, It is John whom I beheaded. He has been raised up. Now Herod was the one who had John arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, whom he had married. John had said to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias harbored a grudge against John the Baptist and wanted him killed, but was unable to do so. Herod feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man, and kept him in custody. When he heard him speak, he was very much perplexed, yet he liked to listen to him. Herodias had an opportunity one day when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers, his military officers, and the leading men of Galilee. His own daughter came in and performed a dance that delighted Herod and his guests. The king said to the girl, Ask of me whatever you wish, and I will grant it to you. He even swore many things to her. I will grant you whatever you ask of me, even to half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? Her mother replied, The head of John the Baptist. The girl hurried back to the king's presence and made her request, I want you to give me at once on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was deeply distressed, but because of his oaths and the guests, he did not wish to break his word to her. So he promptly dispatched an executioner with orders to bring back his head. He went off and beheaded him in the prison. He brought in the head on a platter and gave it to the girl. The girl, in turn, gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in the tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, we've just heard one of the more dramatic stories that's in the New Testament. The story of the beheading of John the Baptist. And John met this fate because he was a prophet who spoke the truth to power. And this was, is often the fate of a prophet who stands up to a bully and tells the God given truth. Now, It would be easy to get lost in the drama of the story, but what I want to start with and focus us on is the first question in this gospel. Who is Jesus? 
And we hear many answers from the people of Jesus' time. Oh, you know, he's a prophet, he's Elijah, he's John the Baptist, come back to life. But what about us? What, what, what do we hear today? What do people say today about who Jesus is? Well, one person might say that he was a teacher of morality who got killed and others built a religion in his memory, but he's not divine. A Muslim might say he is a true and revered prophet, but he is not the Son of God, and he is not greater than Mohammed. A Buddhist might say he was truly an enlightened one who put off nirvana so that he could share his enlightenment with others. So today we have many different voices that would tell us who they think Jesus is. Well, what about us? How do we see Jesus? How do we see how we see Jesus affects how we understand God, how we see ourselves, really everything about our spirituality. So our image of Jesus is very important. If we think of Jesus as just some harsh judge who's waiting to catch us so he can send us to hell, then we're going to live with a lot of shame and fear. And I know that that's not what God wants for us. So we can see Jesus as Lord, we address him as Lord, and that means we can trust in his power to give us strength to live our lives and to get through hard times, like now. He's the one who offers us strength and courage and eternal life, Jesus the Lord. Or we can see Jesus as our brother, one like us, a human being who understands what we go through, who understands our failings, and is willing to offer us compassion and forgiveness. Or we can see Jesus as a friend, a tender, merciful friend, someone who wants the best for us and is an infinite source of loving kindness. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is our brother, Jesus is our friend. So which Im image of Jesus do you now turn to as we make our prayers? Let's stand and offer our prayers. <clears throat> We pray for our church, inspire us to make it a sign of unity, reconciliation, and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Gracious God, give wisdom, prudence, and compassion to the government leaders at home and abroad. We pray to the Lord. <coughs> give wisdom, prudence, we pray for the prophets of our day who speak truth to power. Strengthen them in their work for what is right. We pray to the Lord. We pray that you heal those who have endured ridicule, bullying, or hurtful speech. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the strength to endure the COVID pandemic and give strength and courage to all who care for the sick. We pray to the Lord. <coughs> Let us pause a moment and offer our, the prayers of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Gracious God, you fill us with your love. You draw us close to Christ. We pray that you will hear our prayers and that we may see your will at work in our world. We make these prayers in the name and power of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you forever. 
and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, may our stay be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of all my sins. Sisters and brothers, pray with me that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Amen. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim, holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. But share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, he take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, he take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that she should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.